BlackRock, the world's largest investment manager, has become an increasingly influential Wall Street player in Washington, D.C. The firm has hired notable policymakers over the years, and at least three leaders with the New York-based asset manager on their resumes now hold prominent roles in President Joe Biden's cabinet. Former BlackRock investment executive Brian Deese leads Biden's National Economic Council, effectively serving as his top advisor on economic matters. Biden also tapped Adewale Wali Adeyamo, a former chief of staff to BlackRock chief executive and longtime Democrat Larry Fink, to serve as a top official at the Treasury Department. Meanwhile, Michael Pyle, BlackRock's former global chief investment strategist who had worked with the Obama administration before joining the firm, serves as chief economic advisor to Vice President Kamala Harris. But unlike Goldman Sachs, a household brand name synonymous with executives leaving finance to go shape public policy, BlackRock isn't as well known to people outside the investment industry. BlackRock Inc. is the world's biggest company you've probably never heard of. BlackRock was formed by founder and CEO Larry Fink in 1988 in New York City as a risk management and fixed income institutional asset manager. Now it is the world's largest asset manager with $10 trillion currently in its portfolio. According to MarketWatch, there is currently around $40 trillion in circulation around the world, which means BlackRock manages a quarter of the world's money. Forget Tesla and Amazon and their eccentric spacefaring CEOs, BlackRock and its comparatively reclusive CEO are the biggest players on the global financial stage. How did BlackRock become the largest asset manager in the world, and what does it mean for the current and future world economy? BlackRock and Vanguard are two of the big three passive fund asset management firms. The third, State Street, is owned by BlackRock whose largest shareholder is Vanguard. It seems all roads lead to BlackRock. Vanguard is the largest shareholder of BlackRock. Vanguard itself, on the other hand, has a unique structure that makes its ownership more difficult to discern. But many of the oldest, richest families in the world can be linked to Vanguard funds. Vanguard and BlackRock are two of the top owners of Time Warner, Comcast, Disney, and News Corp, four of the six media companies that control more than 90% of the U.S. media landscape. Media behemoths that may present themselves as rivals are, in reality, owned by the same company. The editorial authority of BlackRock and the companies in which it has a stake is debatable, but the point is, it can direct narratives globally and influence geopolitics at the grandest of scales. While BlackRock and Vanguard shape the media landscape of the world, BlackRock's secret weapon, an advanced trading algorithm called Aladdin, has been shaping global markets for decades. The extensive technology program, which by some estimates operates more than $21.6 trillion in assets, was created by Fink and several colleagues in 1988. Aladdin is an acronym for the Asset, Liability, Debt, and Derivative Investment Network, a program that executes an average of 250,000 trades per day. Aladdin executes trades in every asset class across every industry and directs the actions of the Federal Reserve and almost every major U.S. bank. It controls over half of the ETFs, 17% of the bond market, and 10% of the stock market. It collects data points on every market, every company, and every asset and uses machine learning to calculate which trades to make in less time than it takes for your brain to send an electrical signal through your nervous system to your fingers. The network that makes up Aladdin is approximately 5,000 supercomputers that now act as the central nervous system for the world's most sophisticated investors and asset managers. Every major bank and fund has come to rely on Aladdin and its all-powerful AI to beat the market, which raises several fundamental questions about the nature of our fragile financial system. If Aladdin's network were to be hacked, it could be a swift and catastrophic impact on the global economy. The most existential problem is the monopoly this algorithm has created. BlackRock essentially rents out its proprietary golden goose to the world's highest bidders, mostly large hedge funds and mega banks. This paradigm leaves smaller investors at a major disadvantage and gives companies like BlackRock and Vanguard license to steer the economy as they see fit. When the global financial crisis hit, Aladdin was called upon by every major bank as well as the head of the Federal Reserve and U.S. Treasury. The U.S. government called on Aladdin to figure out which assets to keep and let go of at Bear Stearns, a New York-based global investment bank, securities trading, and brokerage firm that failed in 2008 and was subsequently sold to J.P. Morgan Chase. The success Aladdin had in almost single-handedly stopping the world from experiencing complete financial collapse earned it a prestigious place among the world's most governing bodies. Aladdin was given free reign to decide what to do with the $2 trillion that was printed in the wake of the Great Recession. The majority of it was allocated to bonds and funding to prop up the mortgage companies and banks, assets in which BlackRock was already heavily invested. In 2017, 
Fink launched a new project at BlackRock called Monarch, which replaced many of the firm's fund managers with algorithms. Now over 70% of all U.S. stock market trades are executed by robots, according to Investopedia. The influence of BlackRock and its all-powerful algorithm cannot be overstated. As of 2022, at least three executives from BlackRock operate notable positions in President Joe Biden's cabinet. Biden appointed BlackRock executive Brian Deese as head of the National Economic Council, and Adewale Adeyamo, former chief of staff to BlackRock's chief executive, is the top official at the Treasury Department.